Welcome back to the fourth week of Emotional Firewalls campaign. This week's spotlight is for executive leaders and we're going to focus on how senior leaders can use an executive shield to protect themselves and their teams and their company against digital challenges, notably scams. Now, what are scams in a business language, in a cybersecurity language, social engineering. Social engineering is where scammers and criminal use emotional manipulation techniques, psychological tricks to trick people, whether it is into clicking, whether it is answering a phone and, may, and giving out information they're not supposed to, whether getting hold of their passwords because they were on the phone or they got into their computer and then snoop around in your company's data for God knows how long until they decide to go to the next steps, whether it is denial of services attacks, so they saturate your data trafficking, or whether it is ro ransomware scams, also romance scams, as you've seen on Monday. Over 90% of cyber attacks still are used through social engineering. Why? Because our emotions, not necessarily people, are the path of least resistance for criminals. Then there are several layers of complexity. Cybersecurity, information technology was predominantly a responsibility of the technical leaders. So chief information security officer, chief information officer, digital security, whatever title or function you've named it, it was not necessarily a responsibility across the boardroom, across the C-suite. But when we look at information technology, it's our nervous system because everything is digital. You can't work and possibly survive as a business if you're not on your digitization journey. This brings immense potential and opportunity for your business, for your people to attract the best talents. But it also brings vulnerability because there's always polarity in this world. There is light and there is dark and scammers and criminals and even people who are looking to make a bucks, buck. I do have to give a warning. Sometimes I make incorrect English statements. So please do not judge my credibility based on my English, but based on the emotional intelligence expertise that I'm sharing. <laughs> it is a huge risk for any business. We can see the regulations across North America, in Europe and all around the globe becoming more stringent as carrot and stick are being used to force businesses in taking more responsibility, more accountability, not only for the chief information security officer or chief information officer or those that function that is responsible for secure infrastructure. This is a challenge because cybersecurity is seen as technical. In its original purest form, it is technical. It means securing data systems, cloud services. But when we look at how cybersecurity is being defined or is playing out in today's modern world of remote working, of hybrid working, it is a cultural problem. It is a people problem because what did scammers, criminals, and anyone who's looking to make money fast way in an unethical way do? They're not going to necessarily try to figure out how to bypass your blockchain security. If they want to make fast money, they're going to go straight to your people, to the emotions. And here is the link with how well do we know our people? What are their stress levels? What are their personal challenges? You cannot separate professional and personal in today's age. And these are all uh, risks and perhaps a new set of risks that are blurring the line between human resources across functional departments and your role as a senior leader in how do you take responsibility to not only protect yourself because executives are often targets of spear phishing uh, emails, for example, because your public figures and your high profile, by nature, your title, your function brings more risk. And how do you model a healthy security culture from above without getting into the technical issues, but still having a basic foundation 
of cyber hygiene, of cyber resilience. And this is where emotional firewalls come in. Emotional firewalls are a set of emotional intelligence and resiliency strategies based on a scientifically validated model of emotional intelligence that is already being used worldwide to help people increase their leadership skills, improve performance, increase their resilience. And I am using it specifically tailored to navigating the cyber challenges of today's age. And this campaign is all about how do you develop that invisible shield? So the risk of penetrating your emotions is low. It's not zero because I do not believe that we can eradicate social engineering for good. Anyone who tells you human error conquered is just after your money because it's just not credible. They are becoming more sophisticated. We are human beings, we make mistakes. There is always a risk. You want to reduce it to the residual risk. So the residual risk is after you've done everything possible in mitigating the risk, you accept your risk appetite, but then there's still a small portion of a risk that you accept, right? That is the residual risk. And you want that to be as small as possible, specifically to your organization, to your industry, and tailored to your way of life. So what are three EQ tools that you can use is first, self-regard. Self-regard is all about how we like and uh, dislike ourselves based on our both positive and negative qualities. When it comes to functional self-regard, and this is the key, because if you are, for example, a chief marketing officer, or if you are chief sales officer, or if you are a chief operating officer, from a functional perspective, you may see yourself as not responsible at all with anything cybersecurity, unless it's those monthly videos to check the box that you are cyber hygiene. And this is the problem because those videos are not going to reduce your risk, residual risk factor across the company. You need to understand how your personal leadership style, how your team, the user experience of working with the cloud, of working with this technology, increases or decreases the risk for people with bad intentions, scammers, criminals, and anyone who's trying to make unethical money, take advantage of that. You don't necessarily have to know more than the basic technical security measures, update your software, reboot your computer, make sure that you breathe before dealing with emails, self-awareness as well, so you don't let the emotion of fear get in the way or stress and anxiety. Those things are, have to become a way of, of habit and that, a way of life at work. But then there is a layer of how does this apply within specifically your team, your function? And how does it relate to your objective? If you are chief marketing officer, your objective is brand reputation, customer experience. And your focus is more on an epic customer experience. And if from a functional perspective, you class with security functions because you believe they're going to slow down the customer experience or they're going to negatively impact the customer experience, then you're going to value innovation, customer experience over security. But when there is a data breach, when your uh, brand integrity is compromised, then the customer experience is by default impacted. So this is the link you want to make within your team, within your function, in order to change the self-regard from a functional perspective. So no longer think I am not responsible for cyber to I have a responsibility to my company, to my team and to myself to understand how we execute our work in a safe and secure way without compromising on our goals and objectives within the marketing department for example. And this is what can drive your collaboration and your conversation with those who are responsible for cybersecurity. So this is from a self-regard perspective. From a more personal, individual perspective, 
The other emotional intelligence, emotional quotient, it's the same emotional quotient refers to how we measure our emotional intelligence and is used interchangeably. It's all about recognizing what you feel and why you're feeling and how it leads to your behavior. And this is key in today's digital age because what they often do, they criminal scammers, anyone who's making, trying to make money in an unethical way, they use emotions of fear, of anxiety, of pressure, the negative emotions to get you to act. And if you are unaware, for example, if you had a bad night of sleep, if you are in a high level position, you have a lot on your plate, it takes up a lot of energy. So you can only focus on X amount of simultaneous tasks, which is also not really good for our brain and which keeps us in this perpetual stress mode. Your inclination to reduce the emotional discomfort you feel is going to be higher than the inclination to feel the discomfort, to take a step back and not react based on that impulse and that trigger. This is where emotional awareness comes in, because if you don't know what you're feeling, then your brain is going to continue sending signals to your body that you are in danger. And again, this perpetrates the stress, the chronic stress mode. So when you articulate and when you understand, now you're giving a sense of security to your brain that no, we are fine. I know why I'm feeling fear because I fear I'm not going to hit my target. I fear that the sh shareholders are going to pull out. I fear that we are going to be subject to a data breach and we are not prepared to take it. Tune in, articulate, be very clear because anything you resist will persist and it will just make it worse. Emotional self-awareness is a key shield against emotional manipulation. And then the last one is all about optimism. When we hear about cybersecurity and when we watch the news and when we read the statistics, it's all doom and gloom, right? It is like, this is the Pandora box we already opened and how are we going to thrive as a business, as a leader in this environment where scams are rampant, where social engineering is the main cause for data breaches and subsequent ransomware attacks as well. So it's very negative all the time. And we need to switch, we need to switch the flip, flip the script. I warned you, my English is comme ci, comme ça. <laughs> my French is not anything better, by the way. <laughs> my son always jokes with me that I need to go back to French school, so we'll see. We need to flip the script on cybersecurity being a source of fear. Optimism. Optimism is accepting where you are now, accepting the challenges and having a vision that you move towards a vision of what would my business or what would, if you're the chief executive officer, or if you're leading the company, if you're leading a team in a high level position, where do I want to lead my team through? How can I lead them through these times of uncertainty, technical disruption? and uh, rampant uh, challenges when it comes to uh, social engineering scams or cyber threats. How can I transform their fear into freedom? And how can I transform their anxiety into responsibility, into empowerment, that each and every one in the team takes responsibility and accountability for showing up in a way that is safe and secure, for taking uh, responsibility and paying attention to how they use information online. That, for example, I've seen over and over again when I do consulting, people have their personal WhatsApp applications installed on their professional computers and it's out about in the open. And then you have open space offices and everyone can come by and read those or they have shared documents that they are sharing through passwords still, and everyone has the same password. These are poor cyber hygiene habits that address the need of quick action speed versus taking a step back. How is this increasing our cyber risk posture? Sometimes you don't need blockchain technology to have people use common sense and not install personal application on your cloud server, to have people pay attention who they let in if they're not authorized, to have zero tolerance policy 
for online sh file sharing with the same password. These don't require a state-of-the-art technology. This requires state-of-the-art human basic common sense. Sometimes we need to go back to basics to reduce the risk before we dive into state-of-the-art technology. No state-of-the-art technology will make up for common sense. Thank you for tuning in and tomorrow we will dive into the resiliency part. Make sure you follow the page if you feel a call to, if you would like to support me. All donations go to my mission of building an emotional firewalls academy to empower each and every generation to build those emotional firewalls and develop their own EQ shield against digital deception and challenges and stand strong in the face of digital adversity. I did not practice that, but I think it came out okay. <laughs> Bye.